This video is a part of a series on how to develop an embedded coder target for an ARM Cortex-A based hardware platform. We are using the ARM Cortex-A SDK to build a target for a BeagleBone Blackboard. So far we have registered a target, added the application deployment and scheduling features to it, and we are now able to generate an executable from a Simulink model and run the generated code on hardware. In this tutorial, we will focus on the processor in the loop feature or PIL feature. The PIL feature allows early verification of the generated code. So let's get started. We'll follow these steps to add the PIL feature. We'll first add the feature, then map it to the target, then save the target, and then finally test it. So let's start by adding a new PIL called my new PIL. Then we map it to the hardware. Now if you remember in our last tutorial, we already set MATLAB preferences for uh, IP address and so on to communicate with the target from MATLAB. So that's already been done. Now we have mapped the feature, PIL feature to the target. Let's go ahead and save it and then test the target. Of course, these are just four commands in MATLAB, but there's a lot going on under the hood here. We use the Linaro toolchain to compile the generated code and the object code will run on the BeagleBone Black. PIL allows us to verify the algorithm on hardware. So normal simulation techniques won't account for restrictions and requirements that the hardware imposes. The PIL feature allows us to test these limitations early on. Okay, now that, now that the test is passed, let's start with a simple model and actually test the feature ourselves. So I'm going to go to the current folder and open up a model that I have started. It's a very simple model. We have a constant block here with value 2, a gain of 1, and that's going to a subtract block uh, and a scope. So first, let's create a subsystem from the gain block. Now we will build this subsystem. And I've already set up some preferences in the configuration parameters to create a PIL subsystem as a result of the build operation. I'm going to add this PIL block to the model here. The way this works is the top subsystem will work in Simulink and the gain, gain block will operate in Simulink, whereas the bottom subsystem will actually run the generated code on hardware and provide the output back to Simulink. So the bottom branch here will be using the target's math libraries to execute the algorithm. So what we are going to do is a simple operation here. We'll simply connect the constant block to both the top subsystem as well as the bottom subsystem. They should give us the same answer as the output. We'll, we'll feed those to the subtract block and we should see a zero as a result on the scope block when we run the simulation. And then we run the simulation. All right, great. Looks like we get the expected result, which is zero throughout the simulation. And uh, let's just test one more thing here. Let's change the top gain value to be 2, right? And we go back here and run the simulation. So what's going to happen now, this value, constant value 2 will feed into here. The output should be 4. The gain on the bottom branch is 1, so that should be 2. So the result should be 2, and that's what it is.